I've been wanting to do a Cubase tutorial on scoring percussion parts for some time because I've discovered a lot of things in writing in Cubase that I think would help some others. I've been scoring what well, I call it a symphony. It's uh, in four movements. It's about 30 minutes long and I'm starting to wrap it up and I've learned some things about doing things with percussion and kit drums in particular when you want the notes to appear on the page the way it's been intended. It is a difficult thing to do sometimes if you're not completely aware of what's going on in the program. I'm going to do a video that may help with that who would like to score percussion and kits in Cubase. And you can do it in Cubase. You don't need another notation program. Cubase 9.5 Point three, the pro version does it all for you. So now I have this score. It's not the right size. We'll change the page setup. We'll go up to the file menu. And when you want to score something for a certain size paper, you have to pick the size of the paper first. This one is scored for a tabloid, which is 11 by 17, which I like to print for scores. But for this tutorial, we'll, we'll revert to a uh, US letter. And then we'll have the program do its magic. It has an auto layout function, which is really quite incredible and will line everything up and space it perfectly on the page. You can make adjustments. It, uh, it's doing it for us and it's nice and clean as you can see it does it really really well. However, if you look at the bottom of the page you will notice that the percussion part is not too great and we have these notes down here which actually occur on the keyboard in those regions for these percussion notes and for the kit drums the bass drum is way down, the cymbals are midway up, and the other percussions even further up the keyboard, while there is other things below C3, way below even, that are going to appear on the page like this one right here. That's very low. And we want it to be legible, so let's move along and see where there's a good part here. Yeah, you can see this is kind of... That's illegible for any anyone. They would not be able to read that and know what's going on. So we want to change it so that it's legible. And what we need to do is to make sure that your percussion parts, most of your percussion parts, are on channel 10. The reason why I say they should be on channel 10 is not because you're unable to do it on other channels. You are. However, if you do not have a drum map specific to your module or your sound card or whatever it is you're using, you're going to use the general MIDI map. General MIDI started in the 80s and all the manufacturers decided that channel 10 is for percussion. So you will need to select that. Now you can see that we have note values here. These are note values that would appear in the editor. And the next thing is to check how clean your parts are. These are not on the beat. These are way off it's always a good idea to clean your parts. And so we set the quantize to, I usually do 16th. It's just easier unless you have to go in there. And it will move things where they should be. See, most of this stuff is really off. You could select a huge swath of these things if the rhythm's not too complicated and quantize. And you will see they'll all move. You can also clean up the lengths uh, a bit. You can uh, do option T and that will, whatever your length value is here, and we'll turn those notes into those lengths, just like that. But there's another way that you can do this in the program also, and that is through the score editor itself. Now that we have channel 10 selected for the percussion, we've gone through and cleaned up some of the part a little bit. We can get to that later. This next thing you want to do is pick the general MIDI drum map, and you select that. It's uh, turned the parts from a key editor into a drum map editor. And we have our bass drum here. Now this may cause problems if you have drum rolls over more than one beat. You can access that in the list editor and find those notes and then you can lengthen them. That can be changed. Even though they're visually in the key editor, they look like just diamonds. You can change the lengths in the list editor. But for now, these notes are now percussion notes. So the next thing we want to do is open our score and see what we have. What's important is now that you've selected a drum map over here, you're now able to use the score drum map selection in the options, staff options of the score part settings. And that's good because if you did not select this GM map, you would not have this option. 
This would not be illuminated. This would be faded out like this. Now that you have that selected. Also, I recommend selecting no accidentals because percussion instruments do not need accidentals. And hit apply. It even looks worse than it did before because these notes are really occurring on the keyboard. The basis for this is treble clef. If you were to do a single line drum staff, that would work well for a snare drum or a triangle or one cymbal. But for a whole kit or a lot of percussion parts, it's not going to work that great. I use just a regular staff. This way you're able to move things around uh, so they're visually better. So now the next thing we're going to do is clean this up. And the way to do that is to open up your drum map. So we go here and we hit drum map setup, open that up. Now you're going to notice that it has a lot of the instruments listed. Uh, you're going to need these two things out so you can see what's going on. I know it's kind of messy, but we do need all of these things, so we're going to be using them all. Now that you've linked your GM map over here with the part and you're utilizing the strum score setting, which is right here, what I need you to do is go up here and click on acoustic feedback in your score page. Now when you click on an instrument, let's enlarge this a little bit, and you click on it, it's going to show up in the drum app. You see that? And let's see what note is this here. Well, that's the bass drum. Now look where that shows up. It shows A0. C minus 2 is all the way at the bottom. My bass drum should be up here, but because Yamaha and General MIDI went their separate ways, that bass drum isn't going to occur up here. It's going to go where Yamaha wants it, which is right there. So let's just change this to bass drum so I know where it is. This is where the fun part comes in. The display where it's showing that note is where that note is occurring on the staff. But we want to change that note. We want to move it up. I want it up to C3 so it's more legible. And this is the uh, magic part. So you click on this, you use the roller portion in your mouse, and you roll that note up. And look at that. Isn't that a thing of beauty? You're rolling it up to where you want it to display. And I like it right there at C. The ride is here. I want that to be higher up because I like the symbols to be higher so they're not confusing. Uh, C5, we're going to put that there. So we have lots of room on the page. The snare, I want that to be A. All the snares are going to be on A. Uh, and then I have other things too that are pedal. I think that's good on E. Pedal hi-hat. You can see where that is. And of course we have another drum another snare that I'm going to move this to uh, GO it's not even identified here but we're going to move that up to A A3 so that's got a ways to go and you just move it of course you could type it in but I think it's more fun to do it this way there you have it now you're looking at this part and you're saying my goodness it's still a mess and you're right so we need to select a couple of things and this is what I was referring to as cleaning up your parts. Now, these parts are not clean. You see, they're very messy, and my rhythm wasn't very exact. Cubase has a really neat function in that you can have the computer decide exactly what it should be displayed. And what you do is you auto-quantize. That will automatically quantize all the note values to line up at specific beat regions. It makes it a lot easier to read. Okay, we'll hit Apply. And that made it look worse. But here's the reason why. Because we have such a high quantization value of 64th notes. Instead of 64th notes, let's do the, the quantize as 32nd notes and then hit apply. And then it cleans it up quite a bit. Now, the other way you can clean this up is by going to our auto layout and uh, optimize all. And then have, let's see, have a maximum of four bars. And that will clean it up also. And so now we have a more clean part. So now the other thing that we can look at are the note heads. I think for drummers, they would probably like to see note heads coincide with instruments that they have to play. I think in some ways it's easier. I have a friend who's a drummer, though, who's like, okay, what is this? I can't read it. I'll just keep it simple. So what we're going to try to do that, we're going to try to keep it simple. Let's go here to this section. You hear that magnificent drum part. Now we have some we have some hi hat going and we have some open and closed hi hat. I want to move the hi hat up to G and that's a closed hi hat. I want to move it up to the G4 because I think it looks better there. And then I want to move the open hi hat to G sharp. And I will tell you why that is in a second. We want 
we want the open hi-hat to be G sharp because it'll still be on the G line, but you'll be able to select it. Let's say I want to do this. I want to select equal pitch, same octave. It will now select all the open ones. It will not select the closed hi-hat, only the open ones because it's G sharp. Now it's not showing the accidental, but it's still relying on that accidental. And the beauty of that is, now that I've selected just that pitch, which is G sharp, and there's no other G sharp here, I can change the note head so it more reflects what I want that drum to do. And so what you do is you go down and you select properties. This is the properties window. And with the properties window, you can select the note head. And so I will select a note head that looks more open, and that will be this one. And then hit apply, and magically you have an open hi-hat now. Now the other hi-hats, I want them to look a little different also. So we'll select one of them, and then we'll select all of them using your control key. And we will select equal pitch, same octave. And I'm going to select for that in the properties, the note head is going to be this one, plus sign. So now the drummer knows that he's playing the hi-hat there. That's an open hi-hat. So now when we hear it, There are other things that you can do. Uh, I think selecting note heads in general uh, to normal note heads for bass drum will give some more emphasis visually so that the drummer can say, okay, that's that. The final thing is voicings of these things. You have the stems. You can do them high or you can do them low, and it has to do with the voice that you choose here. Now, what I would like to do is the bass drum. I'm going to change the voice to two, and it's going to move it down. It will move that down, which makes it even more easily read. You still have to mark, you know, splash symbols and so on. And you can do that with the text function here, which is other. And you can say, you know, this is a symbol because they need to see that. And if you have a splash somewhere along the way, like there'll be a splash symbol here and there, or this is a bell, we're going to put a text in that so that the, um, the drummer knows what that is and it will help them to see what's going on. And that's a splash. Let's put a splash there. Well, that's real important. They know what that is. So we're still marking what's going on in the part. Now, there are other things that we can do to the part, but for now, I think that's a pretty good tutorial to go from what was really a mess to something that's uh, fairly legible in Cubase is not that difficult. Just as a few things you need to, to do is, number one, make sure you're in channel 10 because you see how the output channel here is automatically in GM as 10. Number two, try to clean your parts, but if not, you can go to the score editor and in main staff, you can auto-quantize. That will clean your part for you. And then make sure to link the drum map to the part, and then you can select the score drum map. No accidentals, even though you use accidentals, you will not see them, but they will occur. That should help you in the display. You can move these um, note heads up and down. I hope that helps you out. Good luck.